This is a topic that many of us may struggle with, knowing when to quit. Whether it's social media or a job or a project, it can be very challenging to know when is the best time to quit because thoughts may go through your mind. Am I missing out on something if I stop now? Or was I getting closer and closer to my big break and then I left all that I've done? So I'm gonna share two stories with you, my story and the story of a client, and I'm gonna share some insight in terms of how do you know when it's the best time to quit. So a few months ago, I made a big decision to say bye-bye to Instagram. It was a huge decision because it was the first platform that I started on when I began my business and it has been great for me in terms of learning how to do video content. I started on Instagram in 2020 and some point, I'll say early 2021 is when Reels became super popular. So I was doing Reels and I was learning how to get comfortable in front of the camera and for that instagram was absolutely amazing but over time i realized that there are certain aspects of it that i didn't necessarily enjoy as much as many of you know i teach quiet leaders introverts to build their personal brand while staying true to themselves that's something that's super important for me so over time I realized that there are certain things I was doing as I was building my personal brand that were not true to myself. And it became this nagging feeling that I didn't like that I would go to an event and then I would have to record myself or take a picture for my stories or kind of document my life. That was not something that was natural to me. And as much as it's great to step out of your comfort zone, I would say not at the cost of who you are and what you represent and your values. So that's a line that I had to draw in terms of as much as I enjoyed this platform, I've learned a lot from it. I don't necessarily want to do some of the things that are required to remain relevant on the platform. So it was a decision that I had to make. And eventually it's been about four months now since I made the decision. I am no longer on Instagram. I do check it occasionally because I have direct messages that people sometimes send me but I'm not necessarily actively posting on Instagram or my stories and it's been great it hasn't made any impact in terms of you know return on investment for my business there's been no significant impact since I stopped being on the platform and I have tons of content from almost four years worth of content that's there so if somebody really wants to know who I am and what I do they could find out just by looking at the older posts but that was a decision that I had to make and at the end of the day it was the right decision and since then I decided that I was going to put more of an effort in YouTube and YouTube is something that I started in the last two years and I absolutely love video content it's something that I've learned to love as I began this journey on YouTube. And since then, I've been accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, so I'm very excited about that. And I do wanna say thank you to all of you who have been supporting my content here on YouTube. Honestly, it's only possible because of you, because at the end of the day, you're the ones who have subscribed and you're the ones who are also watching the videos. So I'm super grateful to you for that and to support me to be able to continue to make such content if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button because that's how i'll be able to continue to make content that is educational and that brings you value as you're trying to build your personal brand or elevate your leadership skills and build your career so that was a side note but yeah <laughs> All that to say, when I decided to quit this one thing that I thought would be extremely detrimental if I quit it, I realized that there was something else that was greater that was waiting for me. And so sometimes it's like that. When you're holding on to something, you're actually preventing yourself from receiving something else. And sometimes by letting go, you are able to make room for a lot more. So that's something that you want to think about when you're making a decision about whether or not you want to quit something that you are doing. My second point that I want to make in terms of knowing when it's time to quit is recognizing burnout. 
and this is the story of a client that I had and she had been with a company for five years she'd been waiting for a promotion for a long time she was putting in the hours working overtime going above and beyond and her expectation is that her efforts would get recognized but unfortunately after those five years her efforts weren't recognized. She did not get the promotion that she was waiting for. Somebody else got it. And she was absolutely devastated. And she was getting closer and closer to the point of burnout. And so she reached out to me for some help in terms of how to build her personal brand. What does she do next? She's not sure what the next move is. And the question that I asked her is, do you want to spend the next five years as you spent the last five years? And in that moment, I could see the reaction on her face that she had never considered it, that her deciding to stay with this company could potentially mean that she could have the same outcome for another five years. So those are sometimes the tough decisions that we have to make. Either staying stuck where we are, where you're feeling unappreciated, where you're feeling undervalued, where you're being overlooked at your job, or taking control, taking that power that you have as a professional, as a person to be able to say, it's my life, it's my career, and I am in control of it. And ultimately, that's the strength that we have as professionals, being able to know that you are in control of your career. It's you that makes the decisions of where you're going next. If you now say that, oh, because of this person, I wasn't able to do that. Because of this or because of that structure, I couldn't do that. You're now giving your power to that person who sometimes doesn't even realize the magnitude of the issue or how important it is to you, but you're handing away your power to that person. So it's all about reclaiming what you can control and to be in control of your decision making as a professional. So recognizing burnout, but also recognizing the power that you have. This is something that can help you in making a decision if you are looking to quit or you are looking to make a shift in your career or in any aspect of your life. The third thing is assess the impact. So for the client, for example, that I was talking about who I asked the question about, do you want to spend the next five years that way? How things ended up going in that conversation is that she decided that she wants to pursue another role. So did I tell her, quit your job immediately? No, because she's a mom, <laughs> she has responsibilities, she has a mortgage to pay, she has tons of responsibilities. So it would be very insensitive to me to be like, just quit your job because they promised you a promotion and you didn't get it. So instead, what we worked on was an exit plan. So together, we sat down and we developed an exit plan. We rebranded her career documents, got clear on how to articulate her strengths. We also created a networking plan in terms of how she's going to be networking and putting herself out there, not only in her current company, but externally as well. How she's going to be leveraging LinkedIn to be able to attract the right opportunities towards her. And we also focused as well on her being able to build her executive presence so she's able to sell her story wherever she is. So that was part of the exit plan. We then just decide abruptly, that's it, <laughs> you know, quit your job. Some people do do things like that and I respect people who do, but it's not always an option to everybody to be able to make such a big move. What I always recommend to my clients is make an exit strategy, set a timeline and stick to it. And that has worked for my clients in being able to make the transition to the roles that they actually want to be in instead of staying stuck where they are. So assessing the impact is definitely something you want to do when you're making a decision about whether or not to quit. The last thing is trust your gut. A lot of times we know what's the right decision that we should make, but we're just hesitant to make the decision out of fear. And so trust your gut. If you know that this is a decision you should make, be bold enough and have faith to be able to make that decision and see where it will lead you. So trusting your gut is very important when it comes to making these decisions about whether or not to quit. Quitting doesn't mean that you're a failure. I know a lot of times it can be branded that way, that you quit because you failed at something, but I see it more as you prioritizing what's important to you. You grow as a person, you evolve as a person, your priorities shift, and so it's only important and necessary that 
your decision making will shift and adjust as you evolve as a person your career will change and shift as you evolve as a person your priorities will shift and change so with that your decision making will also be different so what you prioritize in one season may not be what is the priority in another season of your life for me, in one season of my life, Instagram was a priority because it helped me to get comfortable with video. I got some knowledge from it. I got an understanding of social media. But in this season of my life, it's no longer a priority. So that's how life is and that's how we evolve as people. So it's up to you to really take stock of where you are and what current priorities do you have and how do you align what you're doing with where you want to be. So let me know in the comments, have you ever quit something in order to move forward? Let me know what it was, how were you able to make that decision and share your story so we can inspire each other to know that it's okay to quit because it doesn't mean that you're a failure. Being a quitter does not mean that you are a failure. In this video right here, I share more on how to make a career transition. If you are someone who's an entrepreneur and you're going back to corporate, so click on this video if that is your story. See you in that one.